So, we have the document open, and we see it's a brand new page with nothing drawn on it, nothing sort of inserted on there, it's nice and clean. So I'll go through what some of the tools I'd start off with. Firstly, we have got the toolbar on the top. This is where we're going to use most of our drawing, I'm going to take most of our drawing tools from when we are starting to design our product. The bit on the left hand side is our history or our parts list. This is where we can go back in time and see the change we've made or to look at different parts of the product. I'm just going to sort of minimise that for now to get it out of the way so we've got a nice clean drawing area. The last little bit on your main screen is the thing in the top right hand corner and this is our view. We can dictate which view we would like to view our products from and which angle is best for it to be viewed. You might find that you might need to turn it upside down if you are working on a certain area. So for now we are going to click the top view okay? and I'm going to spin it around so it says top. So please make sure your view at the top says top. Now. We are going to start with creating a basic shape. Now these are my drawing tools. First of all, what I'm going to do is start with a rectangle. Okay, you can see that my view is now taken from the top. So I'm looking down on the object. And what I'd like to do first of all is to click on the point over here and click on the point over there to make a 50 by 50 square. Then click OK. I can see that shape is perfectly square, okay, looking around the sides, and the center point is directly in the middle. Now, if I click on my view to see it from a corner view, you can see what it would look like in three dimensions. But I'm going to just flick back to top view for now. So, we've drawn a 2D sketch. This is a sketch floating in midair. We are looking from it from the top. Now, what we need to do is create a shape from this. So we are going to create a 3D shape by using the extrude tool. Now the extrude um, allows a shape to be manip manipulated up and down to give it its depth, or in this case its thickness. So what we are going to do, we are going to click on the create tool at the top, and we are going to click on our rectangle, and that is our profile that we would like to extrude. We are now going to click one sided, and then if we select a distance, which in this case is going to be 50 millimeters, and click OK, you will see that not much has changed. But this is because we're still viewing it from the top view. If I now click on one of the corners, I have made a perfect cube. That is your first challenge. Please make a perfect cube 50 high, 50 wide, by 50 deep. So, you have your basic cube. Um, brilliant. Yes. But we're going to sort of up the ante a little bit now. You need to make sure you are listening carefully. So, we are at the 3D view at the minute. We are viewing it from the front right hand corner. I'd like it to select for me right. If this isn't reading the correct way round, please make sure you rotate it so it says right in the correct way. Now, we're going to create a sketch on this face, on our right hand side face. First of all, what we're going to do is push Create Sketch and then click on the face we would like to use. We are going to go back to our Rectangle tool and we are going to draw a rectangle in the middle again, which is 20 by 20. Then click OK. Now if we view this from a 3D angle and click on the corner there, you can see I have drawn a perfect square in the middle, 20 by 20 on the right hand side face. So I'm going to click back to right hand side and I'm going to click on create. Now we need to select the profile I want to create. This time what I'd like us to do is click on the center square and you are going to put a distance of 20. So so far we are on 20 wide, 20 high and now this would make our product 20 deep. Now what I'm going to do to check I'm doing it right first of all I can make sure that my thing is coming out 20 millimeters from the surface of our right hand square, okay, which is brilliant. If I do need to adjust this, then it is good practice to add in a distance on this part, but if you do need to adjust it ever so slightly, you can adjust it with the slider here, but I'd like us to stick at 20 for now. I'm then going to click OK, 
and you do want it to be joint, okay? You do want it to join together unless you're making a new point. So you've got profile selected, which was that one, one-sided, 20 millimeters distance, and then click OK. And you'll have noticed now we have like a bit of a square sticking out of our right-hand side face. Now, once you get up to this point, you need to move on to our front face. So you're going to click on the front face so you're on the front view again. You should be used to the habit of doing that now. And you are going to click on the Create a Sketch tool. Do not get into the habit of trying to draw straight onto the product. You need to make sure you're telling the computer, first of all, where you would like it to draw. So I'm now going to click on my front face. As you can see, it jumps to the center again. Now, as opposed to using our rectangle tool or our square tool this time, we are going to draw a circle. I would like you to select the one that says center circle with a diameter. Click on that tool there and you'll notice at the bottom of the arrow now tool, I have a little circle there. That means it's ready to start drawing my circle. I'm going to collect I'm sorry, I'm going to select the very midpoint of my square, click once, and then drag out to the right size. Now, if I stay on the lines here, it will jump 5 millimeters a time, but if I go off these lines and try and click anywhere else, you will notice I get a really sort of 28.284 reading. You need to make sure these are in increments of 5. So when you get to 20, click again, you will notice the sketch turns blue. That means it is then drawn on that face. You are now going to push create again, and this time you're going to select the circle. But I don't want the product to come out this time. I don't want the shape to come outside of our square. We're going to put it inside of it. So we're going to extrude it 20 millimeters. But we're going to do something different this time. So if I look at it from a 3D view at the minute, the product goes out, okay, which is not what I want it to do. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to take our shape and we're going to push it into our product. We're going to push it into our square 20 millimeters. You can see that it is red, okay, which means it goes inside of it and it is no longer stuck out of our product. So 20. If you would rather do this via the measurements instead, as we before put in a positive 20 for a distance, okay, and we can see what that does, you can change this to a negative number, which means it'll go below the face where we're drawing on and eat into our products almost and create a perfect cylinder for us. And I'm going to click OK. Now, if I go back to my front view, you can see there is a nice hole cut out of my drawing. And you can see from there, it looks really cool. So, we should all be roughly at this point here. If you're not, pause the video. Go back for a few steps if you've not quite got this on, redo it, and try again if you've been unsuccessful, okay? Make sure you ask people around you as well, because they might be struggling too, or they might know exactly what you need to do to fix your drawing. So, we currently have a drawing on the front hand side, front hand side, the front side, which is a hole extruded 20 millimeters inwards. We have got a drawing on the right hand side, which is a square extruded 20 millimeters outwards. And we are going to start drawing on our left hand side. So I'm going to click on my left hand side. Remember, at this point, the computer does not know where you want to draw. It might think you want to draw into outer space. It doesn't have an idea. So you need to click on the tool up here saying create a sketch to make sure that the drawing knows exactly where you want to draw the thing on the left hand side. So now we are going to look through the shapes that are here. There is lots of shapes to choose from. Okay, we can look at polygons, we can look at arcs, we can look at circles, but this time we're going to do something slightly different. I'd like you to just start with the sketch tool at the top. And I'd like you to draw me a line from one side to the other. Okay, so it should start at my top left, go through the center point, and end in the bottom right hand corner. Once you've done drawing your line, just push escape on your keyboard to make sure your lines are not connected, okay? And then you can zoom in to view the square ever so slightly bigger. You will notice now that when you zoom in, the squares get ever so slightly smaller, which means you can add more detail in. The more you zoom out, as you can see then, the squares jump to being quite simplistic. The more you zoom in, the more squares you get. When you're moving across the screen, you need to relocate. If you just use two fingers on your trackpad, okay, that relocates you. Or if you're using a mouse, you just click on it and move it out of the way. 
So now what I'd like to do is go back to my creator sketch. No, sorry, go back to my sketch tools and you're gonna go down to polygon and you are gonna click on the top option, okay? Now, you are gonna make me, it's up to you what size shape you want it to be. Um, you can change from six, 10, 12, whatever. In this case, we're gonna use a six and you are gonna draw me three polygons that are two millimeters wide. And you can see the measurement under there. One is gonna go five millimeters in from the outside. I'm gonna go back to the polygon tool again. I'm gonna draw one in the middle. Remember, two millimeters, and you're gonna make sure it's the same, a six-sided shape. And the last one, using the little graph, make sure you go five millimeters in, and then two millimeters in length, making sure it is a six-sided shape again. You will notice now they are all blue, okay? I'm gonna rotate the drawing. The reason why I've put this diagonal line on there is called a construction line. I'm using that construction line to help make sure I am on the right path of my drawing. So it's just there as a little guideline. Once we stop using it, you can just delete that out of the way, okay? Because as you can see now, it's quite complicated to make sure they're all lined up. Delete that out of the way. And I'm gonna go back to my 3D view up here, okay? You might wanna move it out of the way ever so slightly or move sort of the things around so you can see it so it's all on your full screen. What I'd like to do now is click on the create tool and extrude and I'd like to this time to select all three shapes. So I'm gonna just click back on my left hand side really quickly. It's easy to select them in 2D view rather than 3D. As you can see when I was clicked on the 3D view then, it didn't like me trying to click them. So if you just go back to your left hand side view, click on the three shapes. I'd like it to insert a distance of two millimeters, okay? This is gonna be a positive one, so it's gonna come out of our product, not a negative one that we just discussed. We're gonna make sure it's joined to our product, and we are gonna click OK. Now, same again, doesn't look like there's much changed. When I go to my 3D view, you will notice there is now three hexagons in equal proportion on the left-hand side of my work. So you should all now be at this point here. As you can see, whilst you guys have been working, I've opened up my menu bar on the left hand side. Now I spoke about this earlier, saying it was a history and also a parts list. Now each of the sketches which I said we'd done earlier, you can see my first sketch here, which was my original cube sketch, which was 50 by 50. My second sketch is the one on the side, which is when I created my cube that came out. A sketch on this one is going to be my circle where I extruded it through. And the last one there, the last two, sorry, is going to be my extrusions for my hexagons. Now, as you can see, my sketches didn't add up. That's because I've been working whilst I've paused the video. What is good practice to do when you are doing these sketches is to label what they were when you were designing them, okay? So I'm just going to take quickly two minutes to um, label what my sketches are. I don't know what that one is, so I can delete that one if I'm not using it anymore. Making sure that nothing falls in. If something does sort of collapse and say an error, then you can just sort of press con Command and Z on your keyboard and it will undo. And the last one, which is my hex, okay? Even if you just have little nicknames, it's good for you to know where they are. You can actually switch these drawings off as well. Um, because oh, they part of the body it won't let you do that. So if you use a little light bulb at the side and you made it out of multiple parts, you can actually switch these parts on and off to see what it would look like if it didn't have that part attached or if you wanted to make some adjustments. Now, it is still unsaved. As far as good practice goes, it is always essential you constantly keep saving your work just in case it clashes. So what I'm gonna do is label this my first cube, okay? And then just click save on there. And you can see now the file type has changed to first cube. It will auto save it from this point onwards. But just whenever you make any changes, just push save at the top up there.